right, this is the second introduction. Sorry, I've already filmed the first one. It was in slow-mo, so I apologize. And welcome to another video. Thank you for joining us. We are at Beaulieu Auto Jumble. Um, they've let me in early and I've had 10, 15 minutes to run around quickly and have a quick look. And I've already bought one thing and found something else that is bad news. Um, but I'll show you that later because the gates are about to open and that mob of people are about to flood through the gates and come in and have a look around. But I've already been around. I've already looked at it all. I've already bought all the good stuff. They've got a trailer. The Auto Jumbo is officially open. The sun is shining. I'm squinting like I should have some sunglasses on. If only I had some. We're going to start with the first field. Have a quick wander around here. I'm going to film a few bits and bobs. But let's just have a look around. Enjoy the sun. I'll find a coffee stall soon. Enjoy the view. I'll film some stalls, chat to some people, and see what we can find. I came to get you from the tide. I came to fetch you from the pain. I came to help you. I came to love you. I came but you went long ago. I came to save you. From a dream, I came to help you. I came to love you. I came, but you went long ago. So don't buy the hand that feeds. 300. Without the saws? <laughs> Under a quid without the saws. What am I looking out for so far? It's Ranala stuff, obviously. That Ranala pattern, the elusive Ranala pattern that apparently was here years ago. I don't think I'm going to find it, but I'm looking. Any Ranala literature, posters, magazines, the Ranala box that the wheels, lower wheels came in, basically anything to do with those, those damn wheeling machines. The Triumph project, the Orange Tiger that we briefly touched on. Um, there's a, a video coming up very soon that we've already filmed in a week or two where we actually sort of get stuck into that and tear it apart. Uh, and I've inevitably got a shopping list already of bits that I need for it, including tires um, and a rear light. So I think I've got more chance of finding those bits, but probably another engineer's box. All right, this is exactly the kind of chassis I'm after. 1904. Wow, I cannot afford that though. Oh, yeah. I'm very, much, nervous I'm very much enjoying your programme. Is oh. a chance for a selfie? Of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Now, you, you've got to watch my YouTube channel as well though. Well, it's alright, fair enough. Could you take a picture? <laughs> yeah. I saw your video is already oh, on Facebook. You. Thank you. On the YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. You're on it now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in now, oh, okay. It's um, uh, a chap called Egon Bruch. It's a Bruch Mopetta. And he, um, he made them in 57. Okay. And he only made 15 of them. Um, and this is uh, a re re recreation. I, I make them. Uh, they came in the original Magura boxes for oh 57. And the engine uh, is a genuine is two, two, stroke? Speed, uh, two stroke 54cc of pure power. It's like a little Vespa engine with a gearbox oh, on the. Yeah. They're, they're an ILO engine, or JLO engine. So they only made these for invalid carriages and mopettas. So, uh, right. yeah, all made in the, back in England now. He, he actually made them in Nottingham. Okay. Uh, and he so he made 15 of them. Uh, Little alley tank. Yeah. Everything's made in house in our workshop in uh, in Suffolk. Oh, brilliant! And and even a large chap like me can, uh, can <laughs> get in there. Yeah. yeah, can't get out of it, mind you. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's brilliant! And unfortunately, you know these things are these crafts are dying. This chap used to make it and polish it. Just in a tiny little yeah. workshop in in, um, yeah. in Birmingham. And that's down to you. You've got to just make your own now. Postman pants van. 2,750, that doesn't seem bad. Bargain postman pat van. 22,000 for this one, nice MG. That's my kind of organization. Ivan is the owner of the aero engine and he was showing me had an amazing chat with him about uh, he's got another car with that uh, same engine in 
um, he bought that engine to nick some parts from for his other engine i've got a youtube channel have you yes with the car on it yes Has, have you what's yeah. it called what's shed it? racing shed racing yeah i've got sixteen thousand followers and goodness me blah 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 good on you and this is in italy i went to italy uh, it's um, a replica of the 1914 indianapolis persia i made it all but it, all from old bits yeah so it's all pre-first world war but look if you look at all the instruments look and that's the pump for pumping up the thing for, for the fuel pressure yeah yeah and that's the car so that's the horse got that's the same engine that's as that. Exactly the same. So they're the what cars that's the no, Zenith. No, it's the Zenith but cars, made but. in Detroit. Oh. So they're Motown. The period, oh, Motown carburetors. Original ones. Yeah. The Persian, the original car, did you buy a complete car? No. And the, no, you yeah, just bits. I collected bits over two years. I was here walking around Beauty and I saw that body and I thought, oh, I can shorten that. I had an original chassis. Now it didn't have that kink in it. Kinked it in. So I kinked it in. Yeah. And then the front, you know where the dumb irons go like that? Yeah. For they, the were, they were a bit straight. So I cut the middle bit out, bent them down, and then filled it in. Like, it in yeah, like yeah. And the engine runs alright. Oh, it's terrific. It starts instantly. Oh, and I tell you what, I went to watch the people who make them modern The start star motors, motors, yeah. I've got one of those in my camper van. I'm telling you. They're good. It looks the size of a wiper motor. Tiny, I know. And it whizzes a 10 litre engine over like you can't believe. Is this engine just 10 litre? Yes, exactly the same, 10 litres. Big so this was this engine was what, made in California? Yes. When, when how long have you had it? Oh, two or three years. Yeah. What happened was, when I bought the original engine that's in here, the running I one. bought it here. Did you? Was it for sale here? The yeah, engine? Oh, and I missed paid 17,000 quid oh for it. Oh my goodness. But it had three, but it was running. three rockers missing. I said to this young woman, who worked for me, find me some rockers for my Hall and Scott. Yeah. So she put an advert in at Barnstormers, an American magazine. Right. And some bloke said, oh yeah, I've got rockers. I sent him $1,500 and he was a crook. Oh no. So well, I didn't matter. So anyway, so my girl rung up the magazine and she said, Look, it's not your fault, but we're just warning you that this bloke this in guy, New Mexico yeah. is a bit dodgy. So they said, What do you want? So we said, Well, we want some rockers. And they said, um, Oh, you want to speak to Spike? So I rung up Spike. Was he in the States? Yeah, and he said, I can get you a whole engine. And that is why it hasn't got the three rockers. So you bought it so from Spike. So I bought Spike, this engine. And you nicked the bits you need? For three rockers. I'm near Oxford. Oh, not far, I'm in Kent. Well, there you are. So you can I'd come and have a look at my car. I see it running, yeah. yeah. Right up the road in Does that come with the, is that included in, in the price? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some absolutely. of your knowledge. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but the barrels are totally reversible. They fit anywhere. Oh, right. So they've made it like that. But it's ever so light. What's all this? Ah, is that's it? for half compression. So you open for starting, that. is that? Yes, so yeah. Like, yeah, like a and decompression. It, and, and it will start and it will run on a half compression. Beautifully. Right. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, the valves are like saucers. Yeah. 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 They're probably too big actually. You know, it only does fifteen hundred reps. That's it, yeah, just slow. And I took it to Goodwood and I thought I'll have to watch the rev counter because I'll over rev it. Yeah. Fifteen hundred revs it stops. I don't know whether it's designed to do that. It just won't go anymore. Flat on the floor, down the straight, fifteen hundred revs, which is about hundred miles an hour. Well, have a think, have a think, and yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm well, yeah. you know, as I said, don't worry about that. But come and have a look at the car, yeah. and you'll get yeah. an idea of what you've got ahead of you. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck. They've invited me up to his workshop where he's got that aero engine car, a few other Bugattis. It sounds like he's got an amazing car collection, and he's a very clever guy that builds these cars. He's invited me up to the workshop to have a look around. So leave us a comment below if you'd love to see a little workshop tour with Ivan and go and see his aero engine car. Leave a comment, let me know. I reckon one day when I get a spare day, we'll pop up and see him. I fancy that. I hope you've got more than 24 pounds this year. Literally, I haven't got another pound. I've spent the pound. Come on, 24. Come on. Come on. Yes, that pound doesn't last long. <laughs> Did, not, did I buy something from 45 you? 45 years I've been coming here yeah. I, and you described us as a sweet old couple. <laughs> In did my I? life did I've I? never been called sweet. sweet. But it was oh okay, it's you. not the old bit, it's the sweet bit. Oh that's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
machine parts. Right, another reason for me coming down to Bewley, um, they've invited me onto stage with the Lancaster Insurance to do a little chat with Danny Hopkins from Practical Classics magazine. Um, and I'm heading over there now. It's literally over there. Um, I was worried, I've been worried the whole time. Whenever I do these things, it's like, oh, I don't know if anyone's gonna turn up. It's gonna be empty seats and me just chatting to myself there, which is quite common. But um, apparently, that's not the case. Dominic Chenaire. How are you? You're not here because you know you, you're a big name and you're paying your big bucks. You're here because you're a punter, aren't you? Absolutely, yeah. I just love this place. I absolutely love it. I've been coming here for years off my own back, um, and I have to date, to be honest. It's just I absolutely love coming here. It's uh, the atmosphere. Is there's nothing like it. I go to lots of car shows and lots of things like this. But there's something about Bewley that's just it's got that magic touch. And it, it is still true, you know. If you can't find it at Bewley, it probably doesn't exist. But it's way more than that now, isn't it? It used to be just straight on, full on auto jungle because the internet didn't exist. This is this is where you got your stuff. But it's loads more than that now, isn't it? You know, I think you're absolutely right. And for me, it's a big part of it is the community. And all, I've seen so many people today. It's like, oh, how's it going? It's like, I'll come here, face here, people I haven't seen for years, and different, all different situations, all different walks of life, all different people, and everyone has this one common interest. And it's just a, a just a nice buzz about it. Yeah, it's lovely. You didn't just fall into this, it was a process, wasn't it? You started somewhere. What, what was your first inkling that you had engineering in the blood? Well, I, I mean, I've got a graphic design degree. So at college, it was always, I mean, I was never very good at academic things, you know, maths and science. I, mean, I, was, I was always struggled and I was always found myself hiding in the art block, in art and music and just doing things like that. Um, which is why I do, try and do a lot now uh, with the Heritage Skills Academy and people like that, which they sort of promote apprenticeships and things like that. So I went on such a wiggly route round doing art, fine art, graphic design, working for a photographer, around and about. I mean, there was a constant strain all the way along of me owning classic cars, rusty classic cars, which, which were knackered and needed work doing. Yeah. Uh, and not having much money, so I had to do it myself, but just completely self-taught. Well, clock in the very first series, and he could fix the clock, but the actual casing it was in was steel, or what was left of it. So that was the very first job. I was like, I wonder if Don can do it. So then they got me in for that. And then, yeah, that was 20, that was Christmas, like January 2017 we started. Yeah. Dom, on your recommendation, I did a week with Jeff Watts. Did you? Oh, yeah, good. Oh, fantastic. Oh, brilliant. Um, the question is, when are you going back with your uh, bucket for the 356? That's the plan, yeah. So uh, from having the body 3D scanned, uh, a buck has been designed, we're going to get made and take down to Jeff and spend another couple of weeks down there making the whole front end of it. He doesn't so, swear at you though, does he? Of course he does. <laughs> course he does. <laughs> is there going to be any more of your split screen and honest job on your channel? Yes! Oh, that's split haven't even mentioned my split screen. Oh, yeah, exactly. that's it. I've got a 57 panel van um, that's been on the channel a couple of times. Uh, yes, there is. I'm desperate to sign right the side of it um, with the Ranilla logo and make it a bit of a shock Perfect. drop. Oh, what's the longest time it's taken you to repair something on the repair shop? The How long did it take? <coughs> did you see the kayak? Yes. That was probably that was a big one, but it wasn't really my fault. There was COVID in the middle of it, right. and it was. You can't and, just blame an international pandemic. Well, no, 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 no. Why are you always pushed out in the outside shed? That's the best place to be. <laughs> I love your YouTube channel, mate. Thank it's you. absolutely spot on. You and Honest John are just brilliant together. Don't let him hear you say that, though. All right, yeah. okay. Our good friends at the Heritage Skills Academy are here. How much is this? Five to ten grand. Right, that is another trip back to the van. Those tyres are for the Triumph project, which you haven't, well, you've seen bits of, but you haven't seen it all yet. So that episode of Taking It Apart is coming up soon. Um, but the tyres are actually a little bit of a clue as to the way that's, uh, that restoration is gonna go. So tyres complete. I've also got a rear light for the same motorbike. That's already in the van, looking good. Sold. I came back to look at the engine to try and negotiate with them and it's gone. Ah, oh, I'm gutted, absolutely gutted. This is it. I should have, I should have jumped on it when I first saw it this morning. It's not a Ranola, but at least it's a, a wheeling machine of sorts. This is made by Bradbury. A little handheld one to do mud guards and wheel arches and things with all the wheels. What a day, goodness me! I'm 
it's so hot it's been absolutely roasting today i bet i've got some sunburn i'm back at the van ready to go home i've completely lost my voice saying hello to too many of you guys it's been a brilliant day i've gone around and around and around the show actually closed about 45 minutes ago and i've been working my way back around i've been very sensible with my purchases not too much not too much and practical things helpful things for the motorbike as well which is really good sorry if the footage has been slightly erratic i've been filming as much as i can and whatever i can um, i hope you've enjoyed the episode next week's video is goodwood revival after weeks and weeks of building up to this next week's video is it's the big one that's it we're going there dan's coming down to film it it's going to be a brilliant weekend so make sure you've subscribed so you get to watch that video as soon as it comes out thank you so much for watching we'll see you next week at goodwood i came to take you